Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today for uh, our new webinar. Today, mainly application scientists at Zurich Instruments and Bruno Charletti, application engineer at Fluigent, will be presenting microfluidic for fast electrical impedance spectroscopy for characterization and counting. They will answer all your questions, so just a few notes before we get started. If you have any questions during the presentation, please use the chat panel available from the top right side of the screen. Our team will answer them right away if possible, or we will bring them up after the presentation. A recorded version of this webinar will be available from tomorrow, and we hope not to encounter any technical difficulties. However, we apologize in advance if that would be the case. Uh, so we will now wait like one or two minutes to late time for the latecomers and for us to set up the presentation. All right, so maybe I think we can start. Yes, when I give you the lead. Okay. Okay, so hi, uh, this is Bruno from Fugent. It's not easy to characterize and count cells precisely as standard methods require additional and usually time consuming steps. We will show you a method to overcome these limitations. Today, we will present a fast impedance spectroscopy system for characterization and counting. So here's the presentation timeline. We will first explain with Meng why EIS can be useful for your microfluidic experiments, including the main applications on microfluidic EIS basics. We will then cover both instrumentation for fluid control and electrical impedance detection, and how all this can be integrated with your microfluidic system. Next, we will show you how to set the microfluidic system from scratch and present real measurements obtained with this setup in a video format. Finally, we will show you how our instruments were used in previous works. I hope all this sounds interesting to you. So there is an increasing attractiveness for single cell analysis. The complex nature of tissues has motivated the development of tools for single cell genomic, transcriptomic, and proteomic analysis. Today, standard cell analysis methods such as flow cytometry and, for instance, FAX, uh, which is called a fluorescent activated cell sorting, presented on the right, uh, do not offer a wide range of analysis tools. This method also requires the labeling steps, a high quantity of cells, and is expensive. Several lab on chip devices have been developed as an alternative, offering analysis tools based on mechanical or electrical properties. In fact, cells' electrical properties depend on cellular structures and content. They are on label-free indicators of cell states and phenotype. Yeah. So, why the electrical properties are so useful in cell research? For simplicity, we can consider a cell as a simplified RC parallel circuit with a cutoff frequency. The assumption is as follows. At low frequencies, typically below 1 MHz, the AC current will preferably take the easier path through the resistance represented by the extracellular fluid. Measuring at this frequency range can give useful information on the size of the cell, as the larger the cell, the more current is blocked. At high frequencies, the current can penetrate through the cell. Hence, in this case, the cell will be limited by its membrane. The osmosis effect created by the ion concentration gradient is the reason for the capacitance at the membrane. And for detailed analysis, of course, it is better to measure impedance at all different characteristics to have a fuller picture of the dielectric properties of the cell under test. So let's now delve a step further on how the impedance measurement is taken. So measuring particles or cells 
the microfluidic flow often requires both high sensitivity and a fast response. And differential current measurement using, for example, a locking amplifier is the key to canceling the noisy background. For instance, the insulating cell moves closer to or away from the sensing region, it will modify the electrical field between the left electrode pattern. As no field line can pass through the cell, the difference of the current measured on both pairs corresponds exactly to the cell's impedance or current. And this allows us to remove the noisy background noise coming from the microfluidic medium. The resulting signal after common mode rejection may still be weak, so we can use locking detection to selectively amplify it. And in addition, the fast measurement speed is achieved with a high bandwidth filtering and fast data transfer rate. So if you are curious to learn more about this technique, please have a look at our lock-in detection principal white paper available on the Three Instruments website. I hope at this point you would agree that EIS can be a great tool in cell research. So how does it compare to other traditional methods? First, it is a level-free technique that enables real-time high-throughput measurements. It provides a wide range of analysis tools and requires only a small sample volume. It also integrates very well with other methods, including optical detection. And moreover, EIS allows for multiple parameter analysis in a single experiment. For instance, proving impedance of the analyte at multiple frequencies simultaneously. To achieve EIS characterization in microfluidics, however, requires a strong expertise on both microfluidic flow control and electrical impedance measurements. Therefore, Fluigen and three instruments have joined our collaboration for an optimal solution. So, thank you, Meng. Maybe some of you are not yet familiar with Fluigen or Zurich instruments. So, Meng and I will now introduce our companies, explaining our expertise as well as our major instruments. So at FluidGent, we want to help researchers and industrials to be successful in applications where fluid control at the microscale level is critical. In 2006, FluidGent changed the microfluidic market by introducing pressure-driven flow controllers, as opposed to conventional syringe pumps. Thanks to our fast tap technology, the experimental time has dropped down from one hour to a few seconds, allowing groundbreaking discoveries and published papers. Our broad range of solutions for using microfluidic technologies and nanofluidic applications offer greater control, automation, precision, and ease of use. We provide end-user instruments for direct control, but also industrial OEM solutions for full integration into complex equipment. Whatever your application, we have the expertise and knowledge to provide the most cost-effective and technically advanced solutions to your fluid control needs. In 2017, we developed the lineup series to fulfill the demand for compact and modular flow controllers that could be commanded locally. It consists of a set of modules that can be added or rearranged to meet different experimental designs. The Flow Easy is one of the flagship modules of the lineup series. It is a standalone and compact pressure breast flow controller. Instead of looking at the PC, users can keep their eyes on the microscope and adjust the control dial. In this configuration, the device allows for pressure or flow rate control and volume distance, which makes it ideal for benchtop use. Utilizing air pressure to drive liquid flow provides also excellent flow stability and response time. Over the year, the range of instruments of the lineup series has extended. One good example is our new push pull, a versatile device to alternate as needed between pressure and vacuum through a single outlet. So, as I mentioned before, we also develop complete R&D solutions, and generating droplets is part of it. We have great expertise in droplet macrophysics, and we provide the easy drop and the rate drop devices. With them, we cover a broad range of users and applications. Whether you want to start producing emulsions in an effortless and friendly manner, or want to generate complex droplets or particles at a very high rate and monodispersity, we can provide a solution for you. 
We demonstrated in several application nodes that we can produce double emulsions, alginate microbeads, or even lipid nanoparticles. You can directly find these applications at Fugent website. Thanks a lot, Bruno, for handing over. And I will briefly introduce three instruments here. We are a manufacturer of test measurement equipment based in Zurich, Switzerland. We have one mission to provide bias in class dynamic signal instruments for advanced R&D labs. Our portfolio consists of locking amplifiers, systems for quantum computing, and impedance analyzers. And today, I will be focusing on our lock-ins and impedance analyzers and show how they can be used to improve your microfluidic measurements. Each instrument we produce includes lab one control software that sets a benchmark for efficient instrumentation control and a good user experience. This progressive approach reduces the complexity of lab setups, removes sources of problems, and supports new measurement strategies that accelerates the progress of your research. The H2LI log amplifier that will be presented in this webinar was originally designed for microfluidic applications and was the first instrument built by us. This instrument has an outstanding low noise performance over a wide frequency range, up to 50 MHz. The H2LI hardware incorporates two log amplifier units in one single box and allows the analysis of the signals at up to six frequencies simultaneously. The instrument is entirely computer controlled, offering the advantage that the data is always just one click away from being saved for further analysis. Our Lab1 user interface comes with a rich tool set. It also consists of an extensive programming interface for your favorite language. This allows for a smooth integration into your existing microfluidics setups. And besides microfluidics, EHF2LI is also widely used in sensors, AFM, material testing, and more. And another of our instruments, EMFIA impedance analyzer, is also a great fit for microfluidic applications. EMFIA can measure impedance very fast, allowing the passing analyte to be measured on the microsecond time scale. And in addition to its high impedance accuracy, the MFI can also measure over a very wide impedance range, from the mini-ohm all the way up to one tera-ohm. It is very precise, so you can resolve even very tiny changes in the dielectric signal. It also includes a firmware threshold unit, which can be used to trigger an output source voltage based on the measured signal. I will now give it back to Bruno to introduce the chip used in this webinar. Thank you, Wing. So to perform microfluidic EIS, of course, you also need a microfluidic chip. So BRC developed uh, the EIS chip used here. The channel design can be custom accordingly to your needs. The chip consists of a straight channel with custom dimensions, with two sets of double electrodes for EIS measurement. I hope you can see on the top picture, but it is also possible to have two channels that meet the main one, for instance, to hydrodynamically focus the cells or particles, or even for droplet generation. The microfluidic chips comes with a package including an EIS chip holder, 3D connection kit, and test signal connection kit. It is specially designed to have a complicated 3D, 3D and electrical connections to the chip. So now we have covered uh, the EIS measurement principles and presented our companies and instruments. Let's now have a look at the real measurement setup. So here you can find the scheme of the setup to perform measurements on micrometer bits. As you can see, the lined-up system consists of one flow easy and the link. The flow easy is connected to the reservoir containing the 20 micrometer microbit solution, which is subsequently connected to the EIS microfluidic device. Note that the tubing passes through a flow unit to monitor uncontrolled flow rate. So once injected inside the chip, the microbits pass, pass the electrode pairs, and impedance measurements are performed using the HF2LI locking amplifier 
coupled with the HF2TA trans impedance amplifier. So I think now you have an overview of the system, uh, but we also thought it could be useful for you to show you how we really set the platform. So we made a video of the setup implementation with real measurements. I hope you like it. So as we saw in the scheme, you first need to connect the FlowEasy to the link for power supply and more importantly, to allow access to our software. You can next provide the pressure supply to the system and connect the FlowEasy to the reservoir. So as you saw, the tubing is connected to the reservoir and passes through a flow unit. This permits to switch from pressure control to flow rate control. You can directly set the flow rate by using the flow easy dial, allowing for local control without the need of a PC. The flow control part is now ready. Now let's have a look at the chip. You just need to place the chip in the chip holder and connect the tubing in the inlet and the outlet. Not that we only use the principal channel for this experiment. You can put the device in a microscope first form for monitoring the experiment. You can connect the four electrodes to the chip And now the microphilic chip is ready. Let's have a look now at the impedance part. You can assemble the output connector, connect it to the signal outlet, and that sends an excitation signal to the chip's electrodes. You can plug the signal inlet, connect it to the HF2TA current amplifier. And this allows to receive capture signal through the chip's electrode. So now the impedance part is also ready. Your system is now ready to work. Let's have a look on the real measurements. Yeah. So this is how the measurement looks like. Um, I hope you can see from the recordings here on the right side of the slides. And this actually shows the result from the beat detection. On the top left of the video, you can see the Fluigen's AIO software permitting to monitor and control both the flow rate and the pressure. The flow rate set at 1.6 microliter per minute is highly stable allowing to perform experience with very high reproducibility. And on the bottom left, you can see the micro bead solution passing through the chip's main channel containing the set of electrodes. And as it induced earlier, each bead passing event will lead to a change from the background current, shown here as either a peak and or a trough. Please note that the left camera shoot and the right impedance measurement are in fact perfectly synchronized. The slight mismatch is because the impedance data are not plotted to start from zero seconds. So here, the amplitude of the current tells us the size as well as the morphology information of the bead. And obviously, a larger bead may have a stronger signal. And the time difference between the adjacent peaks illustrates the flow velocity and the concentration. It should also be mentioned that this measurement was performed at the fixed frequency of the magnets. So the result might change if we move to another frequency. But for this, you can make a good use of the simultaneous multi-frequency measurement unique to the HF2LI. Thank you, Ming. Uh, now let's see the second application. So in a similar fashion, we can also measure droplets with just a bit of modification. As you can see on the scheme, the scheme here, we need two fluids to generate droplets. Hence, we need a second pressure controller on flow unit. So here, two flow units are connected to two reservoirs, one containing water and the second one dissolved. 
are surfactant for generating highly stable droplets. So as you can see, the second flow is simply stacked to the first one, which is subsequently connected to the second reservoir. This earth is injected in the second inlet of the macrophytic chip that surrounds the main channel, allowing to generate droplets within the same chip. The detection of droplets is the same as microbits. Again, let's now have a look at the real measurements. Thanks Bruno for the introduction here. And this slide shows the measurement of the droplets. And here we see the flow rates and pressure are again monitored using Fluigen software. The DSR flow rate is 20 microliter per minute and for water is 1 microliter per minute. Both flow rates are highly stable, allowing to generate highly monodispersed droplets, as you can observe here under the microscope image. The size of the droplets here is about 150 micrometer in diameter. So similar to the beads measurement, uh, but this time actually we are measuring the signal from the droplet. And as we can see here, it is much stronger due to a larger size. We can also confirm the high monodispersity from the almost uniform signal peak height and also the peak beads. This is opposed to the previous video. And again, coincides with the optical camera image variable. In addition, the droplet flows at a much faster velocity than the beads. We show here that the ES technique can easily distinguish each individual droplet, thus achieving a high throughput. And more importantly, we can measure the current or impedance together with the phase at the same time. This is particularly important to determine the composition of the droplet. Okay, thank you, Meng, for commenting the results. I hope you enjoyed it. So, we have demonstrated the use of our systems for beads and droplets analysis, but we performed in the past also additional experiments. Moreover, some researchers already performed experiments with our instrument. So we thought it could be also interesting for you to have a look on this additional content. So here is a brief recap and outlook of the EIS technique. In addition to what we just presented today, in our previous work, we found that EIS can also differentiate the size of microbits. Moreover, we can also measure at six simultaneous frequency on the same droplet. This proved EIS to be extremely useful to verify the size distribution in the sample. By demonstrating our system potential, we hope you see how to use our system for single cell analysis. But life science is not the only field of applications. Microphilic EIS can also be used for food or cosmetic to characterize emotions or to detect bacteria in food samples, in electrochemistry to measure impedance or liquid samples for fuel cells applications, and can also be used in material science for precise analysis of cutting within a chip. So, I wanted to end this presentation by showing some papers where the devices from Fugent and Zurich Instruments played a key role in the research. In this first one, a group from Tianjin University in China developed a microfluidic chip and coupled it with our instrument for mechanical and electrical characterization of several cell types at relatively high throughput. Um, the same group also repeated the experiment on plant cells. Finally, a group from EPFL have also developed their own device and coupled it with our instruments to develop a microfluidic position sensor using the EPFL's impedance position analysis. So, as a summary, we explain why EIS microfluidic can be a great alternative to other single cell analysis methods, as electrical properties provide many insights at the single cell level. So, to develop the best microfluidic EIS platform, Fugent and Zurich instruments join their expertise in microfluidic flow control and impedance measurement. So in this webinar, although we only showed the characterization of micrometer beads and droplets as proof of concepts, researchers already successfully use our instruments for single cell analysis. So with that, I would like to thank you, I and Meng would like to thank you for your attention, and I hope you enjoy the presentation. Meng and I will be more than happy to answer to your questions. You can also contact us at contact at or 
or info at z8hanst.com or at our personal emails that you can find at the bottom left of this slide. So thank you for your attention. All right, I, I think now you can start asking your questions. Uh, with Meng, we will be more than happy to answer to them. So, okay, let's let's take the first one. Uh, question, um, Python supports on the Zurich instrument. Meng, maybe you can answer to this question. Yeah, thanks Bruno. Yeah, and this is also a very good question. And as I mentioned earlier, our LabMan software supports uh, right now five APS and Python is just one of them and we do regularly update it and it is completely free and please enjoy using it. Okay, thank you very much, Meng. Um, second question, how many reads per second are we seeing in the demo? I think it was for the particle uh, video, maybe I'm correct. What is the maximum? Um, so I think in the first video we are viewing uh, maybe uh, one particle per second or a bit less. Uh, on the droplet parts, um, I do not exactly recall uh, the exact number of droplets we were generating per second. Uh, Meng, do you have? The, do you remember how many droplets we were seeing per second? Mm, a good question. I think I have estimated it's possibly ten, maybe twenty or thirty per second. And I mean, we didn't record for very long time duration, but certainly that is possible. I mean, that's limited by the, you know, the hard disk, how long we can record. Not really limited by the major instruments, right? Okay. And you have an idea of um, what is the maximum particles we can uh, detect per second, or this is also a tricky question? It could be tricky, but I think uh, in principle, uh, I think going to a thousand should be fine. I mean, you know, it is actually limited by the, you know, if you are detecting with this optical camera, then it's limited by the frame rate of your camera. But if you are detecting with uh, impedance methods, then it's limited by the speed of the measuring equipment. And on our side, I can tell we can, in principle, go to more than thousand. This shouldn't be a problem. Okay, very nice. Thank you, Meng. Uh, third question. Um, what happens when more than two particles occur at the same time? So maybe, Meng, you can also answer to this question. Yeah, thanks again, Bruno. And this is also a very good question. So if you're talking about measurement under the microscope, obviously, if you can see or resolve it, then you see two particles are passing through at the same time. And in the impedance, this is a tricky question. It might be your peak intensity get doubled. So it, it you know, somehow could also be a bit confusing because you can think it is as if a, a particle with double-sized diameter. And this for sure needs further study. So basically, like doing measurements at other frequencies to see if this is the case or not. Okay, uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, I think most of the questions are regarding uh, the impedance part. So the, the, the question number four is, how will you reduce the noise of the, of the baseline? Okay, <laughs> yeah, so this is asking me again, and uh, audience, if you have any questions for the microfluidic control, please also feel free to ask Bruno. <laughs> so I will take this question. So to reduce the noise, I have already introduced this differential technique. The idea is because there's a reference, you know, the reference has no particles flowing, it's only the microfluidics, let's say water. And if, if you have a signal coming from particles in water, we subtract the contribution from the water, and that is the noise, right? We are only measuring the particles. That's the key. Okay, thank you very much, Meng. Um, the question number five, I think, is a bit similar to uh, the question number two, but I, I will still read it. What is the maximum speed of cells to measure correctly intracellular high frequency components? Oh, yeah. 
Thanks, Bruno. And I think this is really very similar to uh, the mm -hmm. question two. The only difference is question two also covers optical detection part, mm -hmm. and question five is unique to uh, impedance. And I think uh, yeah, I have just answered, particularly if you are measuring at high frequency, you can really set the uh, low pass filter to a very large bandwidth. You know, with the HF2 LI, it is possible to go to more than uh, 100 kilohertz. So that's the limit. So this is really very high. And I'm actually being conservative to just say 1,000 particles per second, but it should be faster than that. OK, thank you very much. Um, maybe there's a difference between uh, the maximum frequency to measure cells or particles, or is it the same thing? Good question, Bruno. I think they are the same thing. OK, thank you. Um, OK, question number six. Uh, maximum sample rate of the HF2LI. Uh, I think that's also... <laughs> OK. Uh, it's asking me again. And, well, yeah. if you have any question about the uh, mm -hmm. pump, uh, push and pump, the, the flow controller from Fluigens, please feel free to ask as well. So I will take it. Uh, there's mm -hmm. actually a bit, uh, let's say, different opinions of what is sample rate. So the sample rate we call is the sample rate at the front end of the instrument, and that's a fixed value on the HF2LI is 210 mega sample per second. Um, some other people, they are talking, in fact, about the data transfer rate. That's how fast the data is transferred from the measurement to your PC. And this way, you can adjust. For the HF2LI, this value we can set to, I think, about 100 kilo sample per second. OK, thank you very much, Meng. Yeah, I think the, the impedance is yeah, it's, it's pretty straightforward for the fluidic part here. And uh, the impedance is a bit more interesting in this application. So let's see if there are other questions. Um, so far, there are no other questions. So feel free to add other questions or to contact us in our personal emails. Otherwise, maybe in one or two minutes, we will close uh, the webinar. There is another question. Okay, um, another question. Uh, have you ever experienced a creation of air bubbles within the microfluidy channel? Um, actually, if you manage to um, plug all the tubing and all the reservoir correctly, as in every microfluidic application, you will not have any concerns uh, with having bubbles in your device. So this is pretty pretty common uh, microfluidic device, and uh, yeah, you, you don't have you don't have a lot of bubbles. Like if if you if you if you uh, if you set the system correctly, there no bubbles will happen. Okay, we have another question here. Uh, can you give more info in the EIS chip company? Cannot find their info online. Okay, so um, the EIS chip comes from BEC. This is a distributor uh, in China. So if you want to have more information, we are really close to them. So feel free to contact us. Uh, we also have a data sheet of the chip. And um, yeah, that's, that's it. Um, Regarding the the the, the website is um, OBEC, so BEC in China. It's a distributor. So, is there another, another questions? Also regarding the chip, um, not that we can. So, in this application, we were using 150 width of the micrometer width, but uh, the chip can also come with 50 micrometer uh, width. This is very challenging. So there seems to be no other questions.
Okay, so if any other questions comes up, please feel free to send them to Freegent or to Zurich Instruments. Uh, we want to thank you again for your participation. We hope you enjoyed it. We remind you that a recording of the presentation will be available tomorrow on our platform and our website. And we wish you a pleasant rest of your day. Bye.